Hello and welcome clinicians, this is Ali Nese with another quick tutorial for you on the topic of indirect pulp caps. Now, all of us know that indirect pulp caps can work if they are done in the correct case and with the right indications. And the right indication usually involves a tooth that is not undergoing irreversible pulpitis. A tooth that has reversible pulpitis or specifically early reversible pulpitis usually fares very well with indirect pulp capping. Now the idea of indirect pulp capping is removal of the decay until you get very close to the pulp. And if you have to leave a tiny bit of decay behind because you would otherwise expose the pulp in that case, uh, it is okay. What you would end up doing is you would place a medication in the past we've used calcium hydroxide medication uh, on these areas where you place a layer of calcium hydroxide and then you place IRM on top of the tooth and then you observe and wash the tooth for a while to see how it fares. These biceramic uh, products uh, are very well uh, suited for the specific indication of indirect pulp caps. Of course, they're also indicated for, in, for direct pulp caps. However, in this particular tutorial, I'm going to uh, merely uh, talk about their indirect pulp cap application. Okay, folks, let's take a look at the traditional pulp capping procedure and see how the modern materials help us do this process a lot more efficiently and hopefully even more effectively. The, if a tooth has a significant decay, however it is testing with reversible pulpitis, there is a chance that we could still preserve the pulp by doing an indirect pulp cap. And what an indirect pulp cap is, it basically involves uh, removal of the decay, let's say this is all decay, but it doesn't quite uh, expose the pulp. What we're doing in this case is we're removing the decay in a very, very gentle and uh, um, effective way without causing damage to the pulp. And what that involves, it involves using sharp burrs, using very gentle strokes, brushing action, lots of water, and, um, and basically removing from outside in, not using too much high torque hand pieces, such as low speed hand pieces, but actually your high speed hand piece with lots of water coolant is a key thing in terms of not heating up the pulp. The goal here is to preserve the pulp vitality through not overheating and not uh, causing any uh, damage to these uh, odontoblasts that are lining the, uh, the, the, the dentin. So um, after doing that, and also another big key is having good isolation because if you don't have good isolation uh, and if you're doing a pulp cap and if you end up having a smear of saliva, uh, underneath there that will certainly not um, give you the highest success rate possible. One of the reasons why a lot of the direct pulp caps fail is because most of the dentists that are pulp capping at that moment do not have a rubber dam on. So a rubber dam is a significant and important thing to have in these cases. So after removal of the dentin here without having an exposure uh, you end up then you end up putting your matrix band on to, per, to basically give you the final shape. Previously we were using materials such as uh, DICAL or something like that here to line uh, this, this area that is closest to the pulp chamber. However, we can do a lot better than DICAL. Today's material science using bioceramics allows us to provide the same calcium hydroxide that comes from DICAL without some of the other materials that are in DICAL, which are the resin and all the binders and the fillers and the setting material that are more, makes side DICAL a lot more cytotoxic than the current biceramic uh, materials. So what we would end up doing, and one of the things that I do, previously people were using MTA in this particular case, and MTA is a great product, however the clinical handling and the ability to add some MTA to this area would be a fairly time consuming uh, process. Uh, from a clinical point of view, what I have liked has been the use of the uh, RRM putty material or the RRM syringable material. This is the endosequence RRM uh, by ceramic line, and the putty is the, very hard, uh, like a cavit, and you can actually turn that into a little ball and place it uh, the same way as you did with DICAL. Uh, but what I found is even more efficiently, I can use the syringable material, which is the RRM um, syringable uh, material, and you can actually use a small little syringable tip, like a, uh, you know, like your acid edge tip 
and you can actually put a little dollop of the material directly here which will very quickly just um, uh, spread out and uh, cover the dentin and then the question becomes what is the right material to restore the space well because the biceramic is fresh you certainly can use composite but one of the things that you could do is you could actually fill the whole space up with um, glassionomer. Glassionomer and biceramics have a very good relationship and they work well together so what I found out is I can actually fill up the whole thing with uh, Fuji 9 and you have to be very careful, you just put it at the bottom and gently fill it up so that you end up filling the whole um, thing up with Fuji 9. Fuji 9 will set fairly quickly and then you can uh, clear it up, give yourself good contact, make sure you have no flash and um, the material sets and it also bonds well to the biceramic. Now, for two months, I follow up the case and make sure that there are no symptoms and the patient's uh, reversible pulpitis is subsided back to normal pulp. And if everything is good at that point, the tooth needs to be restored now with a final restoration because Fuji 9 is not a very good final restoration. Glass ionomers tend to leak, especially in a glass class 2 situation. Uh, and they, they kind of um, leak ions and they're very soluble. So one of the things that I try to do is I try to send the patient back to the restorative dentist at that point and have them place a composite or an amalgam and they use the Fuji 9 as the base and they prepare an ideal prep right into the Fuji 9 and place uh, a composite which will then just cover the margins and that would be fine and that will give you a very long-term success rate provided that you've done a good job during your access preparation preserving the pulp and the um, vitality of the cells in there. This patient was referred to me for root canal therapy and teeth four and five because of patient's chief complaint of um, lingering pain to temperature and severe uh, spontaneous pain. Of course, uh, these are indications